Hey, what's up YouTube? It's your boy Korean Jesus here and I was just browsing through social media and Z's popped up in my timeline and I don't know if you guys know who Z's is but he's a legend and he's actually one of the reasons why I got in shape and he's actually the reason why I started streaming. I used to be 267 pounds and then I lost a bunch of weight working out and listening to him and whatnot. He was a live streamer. He was the very first person to go on random chats and try to riz up girls. It was hilarious. He would take off his shirt because he doesn't look that giant but what is it called? Mock? I don't really know. I don't know all these new gym terms, but then without Z's, there would be no Jeff Saeed. There would be no Frank Ying. If you go look at the term haters gonna hate, that was actually popularized by Z's because that's what he would say when people would hate on him. If you go look at the internet meme, let me look at it real quick. See right here, it took off around 2009 because that's about the time he was, he, he became pretty big 2007, 2008, but he would always say haters gonna hate, bro. Uh, but he was the one that popularized it. People started making gifs and memes of it, but I honestly attribute a lot of today's culture and society of gym culture, haters gonna hate and getting after it. The reason why you have so many nerds actually being gym bros today is all because of Z's. So that's why I wanted to make this video is I wanted to go ahead and appreciate the things he did and yeah just letting you know that I used to be really fat right? I used to be really, and also yo I just want to mention yo I shout out to uh me actually meeting chest bra it's unfortunate I didn't get to meet Z's but at least I got to meet chest bra but damn dude look at bro what look at that <laughs> This is pretty natty, bro. This is natty. I also invented the hands-free selfie. So if you guys are looking at this, this is pretty dope, right? You're like, damn, how'd you do that? All right, hands-free. Hands-free selfies, guys. And uh, he's the reason why I was streaming on Twitch is because I lost a bunch of weight. I got shredded. I decided, hey, why don't I just go inspire some people and do all this stuff. Get them off uh, antidepressants, which I was on a lot of them. And, um, and I was really fat. So I decided to change all that. And I decided, hey, why don't I go online and stream this? And then I was doing that. And I just kept getting in trouble. But that's Twitch, right? I was a brand risk because I was getting people to stop drinking soda. I told people, hey, if you want to, if you love soda and punches and you can't get off of it, at least look into BCAAs and start there. At least start replacing your bad things with better things. And so I was a brand risk, which is why Twitch hated me, right? Telling people to cook their own food. That hurts their DoorDash sales and sponsorships, right? We're going to go ahead and watch this Ziz video because he was one of the few people that were out here actually streaming real content, being himself. If he was on Twitch, he would have got canceled just like me because he speaks his mind just like I do. I mean, I, 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 I understand that I am censoring myself quite a bit on the YouTube because of the YouTube, but hey, I need to get my following back, dude. I used to have a lot of people on Twitch and then I just kind of fell off and disappeared, but... His untimely death at the age of only 22, Ziz had become an icon. Everything about him represented the never-ending struggle between success and hardship. His physique, confidence, and status seemed effortless from the outside. However, on the inside, Ziz was constantly at war with himself. He battled with deep insecurities, a feeling of apathy, and an undesirable position of fame to the point where he wouldn't even leave his own house. Yet, as a result of making his struggle public and relatable to an online audience, Ziz would become one of the most well-regarded fitness influencers of all time, ending his physical transformation looking like this, this, and this, although in the beginning, at a time when his main hobby was playing World of Warcraft, he looked a little more like this, this, and this. Ziz explained that, I was ridiculously thin. I'm talking the skinniest guy in my grade school. People always commented on how skinny I was and I hated it. I was always known as the skinny kid. I remember feeling like a little bitch. I always say this and people will disagree. Hate is great. It just depends on how you utilize it. He hated being skinny. I hated being fat. I changed it up. Hate will create a reason. It depends on how you use it, right? You can go out and become the punisher, right? It's like, it could be great. You know what I mean? <laughs> Girls walking next to them and feeling the same size as them. On the contrary, his older brother Saeed had begun to gain some size after going to the gym regularly, with Ziz also adding that, I started going clubbing every weekend and always noticed whenever a jack dude walked by. They had a presence a lot greater than that of a normal person. The guys respect them and the girls are all over them. And really, who wouldn't want that? It was after making this observation that Ziz decided to embark on a fitness journey of his own. At the age of 17, he sold his World of Warcraft account for $500 before spending the money on a one-year gym membership at Fitness First Carlingford in Sydney, Australia. Playing video games for like 20 hours a day and then yeah. at one point he's just like, I'm done. So he sold his account, three, four hundred dollars of it he spent to get a membership at Fitness First. Ziz explained that after signing up for the gym, he'd have his most embarrassing moment by stating, when I was starting out, I went to do chest by myself, had the bar plus five kilos on each side, tried to go to 15 reps, couldn't get the last rep up and it was stuck and the biggest guy in the gym came running to help. He got it 
off using one hand. L so if you went to my stream, my whole idea was anyone can do what I did, the losing the weight thing, it's not hard. And people are like, oh, I can't just start working out and all this. And I always told people, the hardest thing is just being consistent. So I always tell people to just do what you can, whether that be one push up every day, do it for a week or two. And then after a week or two, see where you are. And I had people coming back to my stream like a month later being like, I can do like 10 push ups. I'm doing 20 push ups a day now. This is amazing. Look, and they're sending me pictures of their gains. Probably think I'm capping. So let's go ahead and pull up some of these, uh, some of these people I help, right? Like people legitimately were letting me know. Like, I mean, I guess I did it on Mixer too, cause I got banned, but uh, yeah, that's the same dude. Shout out to Greg. But a lot of these people, they would just come back to my stream and be like, Oh, look at me, dude. I'm getting better. I'm, I'm getting stronger and shit. They would let me know all these things, right? So basically, when I was streaming, I would help people lose weight, get them on a regular training. I just said, just start with one push-up. And eventually, that one push-up always turns into something. It's that Will Smith thing, right? Practice laying down one brick. And then by the end of the year, you'll have like a house. Same concept. I helped all these people. This is incredible what I was doing on Twitch. I don't understand why they banned me. Well, I do because it's not good for their business and marketing and advertising, but this is what I was streaming on Twitch, just helping people get, you know, better. Eat right, train every day, don't be fat. It's not that hard. It's really inflammation that you're just eating poison. It was kind of funny but that I would just look up ingredients and show people how to look up ingredients and they were blown away that they would put this stuff in our food but european people are always understood well accompanying ziz's embarrassing chest day was the creation of his first youtube channel on the 28th of july 2006 titled seven ziz seven where he began to document everything in his life from fights at mcdonald's to his opinions on music however the most interesting thing that he'd eventually capture stage by stage was without a doubt his body transformation only one year after failing to bench 30 kilos ziz had put on a respectable amount of size and with it his reputation would shift from the unconfident skinny kid to an outgoing guy on the internet who would frequent the Sydney party scene with his brother. Now Ziz was still far from famous at this point. Sure his physique was certainly looking better than it was in the beginning but his transformation wasn't nearly complete. However when looking at a post made by Ziz to the bodybuilding.com forums it's obvious that he planned on continuing the grind stating that this is what he wanted his body to look like in only one year's time. While this kind of transformation after only 12 months seemed almost impossible a photo posted 1.5 years later showed that Ziz had made his goal a reality, yet unfortunately he would also add that it hadn't been achieved naturally. A forum post by Ziz explained that he had begun his first trend slash sus cycle in April of 2008, only one month after his 19th birthday. And while this might have been somewhat disappointing for those following his fitness journey, there was no denying that Ziz looked absolutely incredible. That's what I like about him is that he says that he's open about what he's going to take. And I even said that on Twitch that when I turn 41, I'm going to start juicing. I'm going to start taking something. So I'm going to be 41 this year. My whole plan was to show everything, including me injecting the stuff and what it feels like documenting it. But I honestly feel like there's a lot of negative stigma on there. And in a world full of phonies, being real is a crime. And that's why standing at six foot two with some fresh new tats and an absolutely yoked physique, Ziz represented something like the ideal masculine image. He was the voice for all the skinny dudes out there who wanted to get bigger and get attention or get girls or get noticed or get respect. Yo, shout out to the current generation of gym bros. He was a pioneer, man. And did he get all those things? Yeah, he did. However, this wasn't even the primary reason behind why people began to love him. It was that he had this image, yet he tried not to take life too seriously, breaking the overly serious gym bro stereotype. The Ziz persona was just an act for social media. Aziz created Ziz to be his perfect representation of who he wanted to be and who he played up to be for his perceived stereotype based on his appearance. He would state in an interview, personally, I'm a very friendly and happy person and believe that people need to lighten up and enjoy life more. Even though I put on a lot of size and to some look intimidating, I'm one of the friendliest people you can meet. I love playing up my perceived stereotype and at the end of the day, never take myself seriously, which is one of the reasons that I've accrued the fan base that I have. Now, sure, it's obvious that Aziz Shaversi and the real Ziz built his physique in real life for serious reasons. However, online, Ziz was more of a character that represented the classic fitness douchebag. He even clarified in one of his video's descriptions that Ziz is not a person, Ziz is merely a personification of a way of life. With this being the goal, he began to build a reputation for being somewhat of an online troll. Political views, whichever polit politician is most aesthetic. Barack Obama is pretty aesthetic for a politician, so he deserves to run the country. What's your religion? Shredology. The belief that transcendence of life into heaven is achieved at 6% body fat. 
body fat. A complete euphoria and sense of accomplishment overcomes the shredder, entering almost surpassing the majestic boundaries of human emotion. What quality do you value most in your friends? Body fat percentage. In the process of playing this character, Ziz would deepen his legacy by seemingly inventing or at least popularizing a whole new gym bro language. Phrases such as you mad, you myron, fwak, bra, and come at me bro seem to make up more than 50% of Ziz's vocabulary. And while you might say that these phrases were common before Ziz, he certainly popularized them even further. In addition to transforming his vocabulary, Ziz would also see a complete overhaul in his success with women. In a forum post, he was asked, how much attention did you get before working out? To which he'd respond, none. I never hooked up with a girl till after I finished school. Yes, strong loser. Never cared about the way I looked, did my hair, etc. But that's because I had no self-confidence. As soon as I started going gym, my confidence skyrocketed and I have no trouble approaching or talking to any girl. And most of the time they come up to me. Serious. Now yeah, shout out to Ziz. What a, what a G. Also, bro, anyone else here kind of miss the PHP forum message boards? Damn, I feel so old now. Man, I feel really old when I see these this old content, you know? Now, in all honesty, I wouldn't be able to count how many girls I've hooked up with, lol. Maybe a few hundred or so in the last three years, lol. Ziz had gone from a guy who felt inferior next to girls because he was the same size as them, to a guy who, when messaged by hot girls, simply used it as another opportunity to troll. Looking good. I would appreciate and accept so we can chat. Thanks. Hey darling, awesome to have you as a friend. Appreciate your offer, but no thanks. You are 7 out of 10 at best. And because I'm a lot more beautiful than you physically, I do not think there is any reason as to why I must undertake a chat with you as I would only do so with people who are on my par genetics wise so as to pass strong and attractive genes to my future children. Unfortunately, I'm afraid you would bring our children down two points and judging by your risque DP and ability to message random guys out of the blue, you're more than likely a whore. Thanks for the ad though, hope we can still be friends. Ziz often posted these hilarious exchanges to his Facebook resulting in over 400,000 followers which then gave him the opportunity to feature in Underbelly in another show titled The National Road Trip. Additionally, Ziz would launch his own protein label and a book titled as Ziz's bodybuilding bible, both of which performing quite well upon release. However, shortly after achieving such viral success, Ziz began to notice how much fame was becoming a burden on his life. That's a lot to take in for a 19 year old, that amount of fame to hit you that hard. Because of that pressure, you, you started using more drugs, more steroids. Things I wish I knew sooner, shaving edition. It's a common myth that more blades is better. More I started saying no to photos and people just that's a lot to take in for a 19 year old, that amount of fame to hit you that hard. Because of that pressure, you, you started using more drugs, more steroids. I started saying no to photos and people just thought I was a dickhead. I'm not joking how many photos I get asked for. At a festival, it's up to four to 500 sometimes. First few months was like, whoa, this is awesome. Other times you can't be effed and I feel sorry for my mates who have to put up with it now when they're out with me. I would have never expected it to get like how it has. In addition to being asked for hundreds of photos per festival, Ziz would make a post to the bodybuilding.com forums explaining that every time he'd go shopping, people would yell at him, come at me bro or you Myron, and that he'd rather the video that had made him so famous Never have been posted in the first place. More negative press would cultivate after his brother Chess. That reminds me so much of Dave Chappelle's bit of people coming up to him and telling him he's Rick James bitch in front of his kids. I don't know, that, it just reminded me of that. That was funny. Spra was arrested for possessing anabolic steroids in mid-2011, with news articles on the topic featuring Ziz's photos, simply because he was the more famous brother, which became even worse after a video would surface of Chess Bra stating that Ziz was actually the one who introduced him to steroids. Surprisingly, it was as he was the one that introduced it to me, even though everyone thinks it's the opposite way around because I'm the older brother. He was the one who introduced me to it. Every week he'll jump on the scale and he'll be like, look, I'm a kilo heavier this week. Next week he'll be two kilos heavier. The week after he'll be three kilos heavier. And he'd look at me and Babbo and he'll just laugh at us. And I was thinking, what the f going on? Like, this guy's putting a kilo on every week and getting leaner and fuller. And he's eating like a horse. Like, something doesn't add up. The immense pre like Mikey Musumeci. You c this guy eats nothing but pasta and pizza and ice cream and he looks like this like something's not adding up right we all know that is crazy to achieve not only cultivated a refusal to leave the house unless he had friends around him he used to be scared just to go out in public bro that he needed to bring two or three of his mates everywhere he went just because of the anxiety and the paranoia that he used to get from going out there's a lot of things that aziz was uh feeling on the inside of his mind as well that 
a lot of us can really, really never tap into unless we knew him personally, you know what I mean? But he'd also adopt the attitude in a Facebook post that he no longer wanted to be Ziz at all. I'm sad to announce that I have officially finished with training, festivals, and being Ziz. I want to move my life in other directions, and I've found myself far too involved in a lifestyle with no genuine substance, meeting far too many fake people slash girls who, if I didn't look the way I did, would have never given me the time of day. Time to get back to studying, there's more to life than partying. Four months after making this post in August of 2011, Ziz would board a flight to Thailand for what seemed to be a much needed vacation. Given the timing, it was likely that Ziz was simply trying to get away from the chaos back in Sydney, although what was waiting for him in Thailand would prove to be much worse. Scarily enough, Ziz had actually predicted his own death on multiple different occasions. When asked, where do you see yourself in 20 years, Ziz responded with one frightening word, dead. And while this response was probably somewhat of a joke, on the 5th of August 2011, while sitting in a sauna in Pattaya, Ziz would suffer a heart attack from which he would never recover. A well-known Sydney bodybuilder has died after collapsing in a sauna in Thailand. Doctors say the 23-year-old had an undiagnosed heart condition, but some say a growing obsession with body image is dangerous. As mentioned in the news report, it was discovered that Ziz had an undiagnosed heart condition, which could have killed him at any time. Although, of course, many have speculated that his use of PEDs helped in causing his death sooner rather than later. More concerned with how his brother was going to be remembered, Chesbro would upload a 19-minute long tribute video titled Ziz the Legacy, which to this day has gained over 16 million views, with the comments perfectly summing up the positive impact that Ziz made during his time on Earth. That's kind of, um, th that was kind of anticlimactic ending. I really was expecting some sort of closure behind it. But I guess that's why I'm making this video. We live in such a fake world. But uh, this is the stuff I was streaming on the YouTubes. I mean, I wasn't like completely jacked or shredded, right? But I was pretty good. So, yeah, I mean, I wasn't the most jacked, I wasn't the most shredded, but I would share with people exactly what I did, how I worked out. I kind of missed this, but then that's why I'm making this video, is so, you know, there's a record of it on the internet, so I don't just, you know, die as a nameless whatever, right? I guess I'll make these videos public, so you guys can see some of my old ass... Oh, wow, this is Sony Vegas days. Like, do you understand how much food that is? Like that is, I want to say that's probably like six or eight eggs and that's four or five chicken thighs. And I just ate one giant ass meal. Look at that false grip though. So I would stream myself working out and doing all this stuff. Just to show people how far I came and then keep up with my progress. But uh, I don't know, dude. Damn, I miss some of these people. So much stuff going on. Yeah, I think I'm going to make this video public, guys. So you guys can enjoy this. But yo, shout out to all the people that used to come to my stream and hang out and shit, dude. Alright, yeah, well, that's the end of the Z's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I remember playing a video game and just randomly running across a player. He's like, hey, Korean Jesus, you're a streamer, aren't you? And I said, I used to be. He's like, I used to watch you. And then I asked him in the voice chat, did your life get better? And he said, actually, it did. Yeah, I lost about 90. Why did you stop streaming? Because Twitch banned me, dude. Anyways, that's the end of it. Yo, free Korean Jesus. I literally started streaming because of Z's and getting in shape because of Z's and I want to be that positive influence in other people's lives that I wish I had in my life. But I didn't. So I decided I would do that for other people. Yeah, rest in peace to Z's and hopefully we'll find out what it was that actually killed him because Z's said he would share that information. But once again, I am really happy that I did get to meet him.